Hi everyone, it's Marilyn Alori and welcome to Who Can It Be Now? I'm really excited to talk to you about this particular topic today. I feel like it's gonna help many people who are listening. I wanna talk about how to step into your greatness and how to use your innate gifts, we all have gifts, to develop, grow, and give birth to your greatness. Many of us have this incredible gift inside of us that we are meant to give out into the world, to help them to serve, to motivate. There's so many reasons why we have this greatness inside of us. And you may be sitting on that greatness and there may be a reason why you're sitting on that greatness. And it may have to do with low self-esteem or struggling with self-worth or nobody really seeing you or feeling self um, insecure, being afraid that someone's going to say no. And I'm going to tell you some stories that I have gone through in my own life and the realizations that I'm having today about being in my own greatness and how I refuse to hide it any longer. And I'm hoping through this, I'm trusting through this, that you're going to hear something that's going to get you to ignite that light again and to really go out into the world and to stop hiding what has been gifted to you, whether you believe it's God, the universe, your higher self, whoever's given you this incredible dynamic energy inside of you that is meant to be released, whether it's in a book, a TV show, a website, a healing, doing readings, speaking in front of people, whatever it is that you're choosing to do, maybe it's all of the above. This is inside of you and it wants to get out. So when I, um, this year, started this year, 2023, right? I'm recording this March 6, 2023. Last year, 2022, I've talked about it where it was a really, um, I, want, I don't want to say difficult year because it was a year of change. It was a year that I needed a lot of things to change that when I set out to do that year and I was like, I'm 10 xing my life, I had no idea what that meant, but I was willing to go for, on the ride and I had all the tools and techniques to support myself through that ride. And boy, was it a ride. And at the end of 2022, I closed the doors to many things. I started saying no to things that I knew was no longer in alignment with my soul. I closed a program I had for 10 years. I um, start, stopped doing certain types of telesummits or interviews because I did not feel that it was who I was any longer, who I wanted to represent. And who I wanted to be wasn't yet fully born. I wasn't really sure what I was stepping into, but I knew I had to step out of where I was coming from in order to see what I wanted to step into and also just to step into it, just to have the courage and the boldness to step into it, not even knowing where I was going. So I really feel that I've embraced that completely. And part of that embracing, I'm going to give you some techniques and tools that worked for me as I tell you these stories so that they can help you. Part of it was praying in a different way. So I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. I walked away from Catholicism at a certain point in my life when my, um, when my life was really, really difficult. And I couldn't understand all the difficult things that happened to me in my life. And I couldn't understand the religion that I, I was grown up, grew up in. I couldn't understand how that played a part or how it was supposed to help me. But after that period of time, I returned back to the Catholic Church. And it actually was an incredible experience for me because it reawakened all my gifts. And I actually was lucky enough to go into a church at that time that was very open to who I was as a person, as a medium. I wasn't really sure that I was a medium at that time, but I was interested in psychic things and, and all sorts. It was just a very open, progressive church. I no longer practice Catholicism, but there are certain things about the faith that really have stuck with me. And a lot of that is prayer. Um, so I pray every night and I pray the way I pray. And I feel like a lot of us struggle. Prayer could be meditation. It could be mala bead meditation. It could be just breathing. It could be um, lighting a candle and saying affirmations. It could be writing a gratitude list. To me, prayer is a moment of contemplation and also a moment of connection where we talk about our intentions, not from a place of scarcity, lack, or fear, but from a place of all knowingness. It's a, it's a place of sitting quietly with yourself, your divine energy, who you are, your God-given right, whatever word you want to use for being here in this world at this time, and connecting with that energy of source and really speaking to it. And for the longest time, I struggled with prayer because I did very traditional prayers. You know, I know a lot of the traditional prayers. Um, I did traditional novenas. I, um, I did a lot of begging 
And I didn't understand what prayer meant to me, but I loved the ritual of it so much. And I have a lot of stories about prayer and how it helped me through very anxious moments in my life. One moment in particular is coming through for me to share this story. I was, um, go, it was one of the hardest, it was a really hard year of my life. Really, really hard. I'm not going to go into it, but all my psychic gifts were opening up. So it makes total sense. Like when you're opening up to your divine right of who you are or your, your alignment to your soul, people think it's supposed to be easy, but things get rocky. And at that time, my, um, beloved dog that I had at that time, my little dachshund, Emmy, she was in the hospital and she was um, not doing well. She wasn't going to make it. And I was in an incredible amount of debt. And I knew I was had vet bills just going out the wazoo. And I just let go of pet insurance because I was having financial troubles and I was worried about like paying the vet insurance, the pet insurance. So I let go of it. And then she went into emergency and had to stay in the hospital. And at the same time, I was just, I was going through some really serious health stuff, and I had this quack of a friggin' doctor who was telling me I could have some really serious ailments, like crazy ailments. And I remember getting into bed, and the anxiety was through the roof, and I didn't know whether Emmy was going to make it or not. And I took out all my prayer cards. I have prayer cards to this day, and prayer cards are... Um, cards with saints on them with the prayers behind, you know, on the other side. And I love holding something because holding something physical helps me to connect with the energy. And I took out, I must've had like 20 or 30 of them. I had so many and I, and I wanted to, I think I had a Xanax or something. And I was like, I don't want to take the Xanax. I want to sit here in prayer right now and see if I can bring my anxiety down. And I sat there and I said all the prayers and I just got into this like rotation of just saying the prayers. And before I knew it, it took about an hour or a little less. I know I was in that state for about an hour. My anxiety was gone, completely gone. And it was such a moment for me to notice that I didn't need to take a substance in order to bring my anxiety down, that I could just connect with divine energy, God, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it, the saints, the saints are so important to me. And I could feel less anxious and have faith. And it really worked. And Emmy got better. And she lived for many years after. And my mother actually paid the vet bills. So everything worked out. The thing is, things always do work out. But when we're in anxiety and fear and worry, we forget that. We forget, we don't get solution. We stay in the fear and anxiety. But this conversation isn't about that. This conversation is about you building your skills of loving yourself, owning your confidence, building your self-worth to become who you're meant to be. So fast forward, here we are in 2023. And I had said to everyone last year, and especially my podcast, if you've been following me for quite some time, last year I 10 x my life. This year I'm 20 xing it. And um, my new assistant at the time, when I said that to her, it was fall of last year. She was like, no, because she kind of came in through all the disruption and the craziness and was trying to put the pieces back together and was trying to help me and support me. She's still with me. She's great. And um, I was like, no, this is what needs to happen. What everything that fell apart had to fall apart in order for me to create what I'm here to create. So I've been very conscious about, I'm just gonna make a note because there's so much coming through me and I don't wanna forget. I have been very conscious about my choices and I have been very um, clear about it, very clear about it. I think I'm gonna do a reading at the end for you guys too. So spirit works through me, so I just trust it. So um, this year I had been, I've been very, very focused on next level living, which is my signature program. I'm loving doing the work. I'm absolutely loving it. I love the people in the program. If you're interested in learning more about it, you can go to marilynaloria.com forward slash next and read about it. You can also email me at care at marilynaloria.com and ask me about it. Somebody just did that. And I explained it uh, right before I got into this podcast. But the thing that I want to teach you is as I step out and I start serving a different type of person, I start owning who I am. Why me? 
am I, you know, I know I'm ready for this. I know I'm ready to help motivate millions of people to believe in themselves, to live the life that they're meant to live, to live the life they're dreaming of living, whether it looks exactly like we dream it, it's not going to, but it has the essences, the energy and the feelings of what we desire. So I've been getting very clear about um, the piece. <laughs> I'm doing video and I can't pause the video, but it doesn't matter because um, I had a piece of hair stuck in my face, my lips, my lip gloss. Um, and you don't have to edit that out, Ricky. I don't care. So anyway, I've been very clear about who I want to work with and, and the people I can help because I can't help the people that are on the fence that don't want to make a decision that want to stay stuck in, I don't have enough time. I don't have any money right now. Um, nothing's working out for me. I can't help that person. I don't, not saying that I don't sympathize with things that are happening, but I'm also very solution based. So things that happened to me last year, like I was talking to somebody uh, up here recently and um, they were saying how they were so afraid to close down one part of their business because they have all this money fear. And this is somebody who's sitting on a lot of savings and stuff. And I, and they were like, how did you do it? And I was like, I had to do it. I couldn't sell two of my programs any longer because I, I could no longer stand behind them. I'm integral if anything. And I believe in integrity. And if I don't believe in something, I can't sell it. So I didn't sell for over six months. And she was like, what did you do? And I was like, I was anxious, but I just kept making decisions and choices that were aligned with my soul. And I can see it all working out now. Like, I don't want to say things work out always because things always happen, but knowing why they're happening and staying with it has been phenomenal and amazing. So I was encouraging her to follow her heart because if you push up against it, more trouble happens. You have to follow your heart. You have to have the courage. You have to take the risks. You have to look at the excuses you're making. Uh, you know, I can sit here and I get, I struggle with time, but then I get even more productive. I just did a productivity workshop in Next Level Living because you need to know how to manage your time. You need to know to how to manage your goals. You need to know how to manage the steps and the techniques and which ones to take so that you're not constantly in overwhelm. I'm not in overwhelm because I look at things and I systematically schedule them out. And then when it wants to bother my head going, no, you need to clean that corner of the room, you know, I'm like, no, I don't. And I'm talking like a little dirt on the baseboard. My room, my house is organized and clean. But sometimes I'll walk by and I like, I have animals and I'm like, oh, God, clean that. I'm like, not right now. I'm about to do a podcast. You don't have to clean the corner right now. Those are distractions. Those are habits that want to keep us down. So as I step into this more, and I was just talking to somebody recently, I can't remember all, everybody, but I'm coming out more on my personal page on Facebook. If you want to follow me on my personal page, by all means, please do. Um, and I didn't do that for the longest time because I had people from that I knew from MTV on there and NBC and my family and, you know, not everybody supports me. And that was a big thing for me last year. I was like, well, F them. I'm not even mad. I don't even care. I'm supporting me. I don't need you to tell me who I am. I don't need you to validate me anymore. I validate me. And I validate me and God validates me. And that's it. So I've gotten really strong and I've started just posting and sharing and posting who I am and doing Facebook lives. And I've shared this story before about how like people comment and I'm like, Ooh, you know, you get surprised by things like that. I remember I was uh, writing on my Facebook page about what channeling meant. And a lot of my MTV people were writing on it. I'm like, that's interesting. I wouldn't think they'd be interested in that conversation. I remember saying to a, a woman who worked for me at MTV um, quite a few years ago, we were friends. And I said, why did you accept me as a medium right away? And she goes, because you were never a liar. You were the most honest person I knew at MTV. So I knew you weren't lying about this. So you may think people are going to react to you. You may think people are going to think you're strange. You may think people are going to, but who cares? Who cares? It's your life. You're living your life. So I've been thinking a lot about outside validation and how I no longer need it. And the other day, it always happens when I'm working out. I was working out and I was thinking about 
all these stories of when I worked at MTV and NBC and being pitched for my own TV show. And I was especially thinking about the time I was pitched for my own show. So I've worked with many different production companies over a period of time and gotten very close to having my own TV show. And I was working with this one company towards the, before I left LA and we got really close. I was, they were, they were with a big agency. They were a really big production company. I got along amazing with the main executive producer and we would go to all these meetings together in these networks. And if you think you are so ready for that kind of moment, really ask yourself if you are. Because a lot of times people tell me, yeah, I'm ready for this and I'm ready for that. And I'm ready to talk to Oprah. And I'm like, yeah. And if Oprah was standing in front of you, some of you may just run and hide. And I'm not saying that you're not, but I know from putting myself, that's why you can't sit and just dream about it and sit on the fence. You got to go and do it and see what happens. And then you need the techniques and tools for when you fall on your face. And I'm going to talk about how developing your psychic gifts helps all of this. I was reading a, and I'm going to go back to the story in a second, but this is a good segue. I was looking at um, a video that Oprah did on Instagram about how she has no diet gumby, gum, gummies. Apparently she's lost weight. And I think it's through her hiking. She hasn't said, but she said that she had knee surgery and now she's feeling healthy and great. And she looks amazing and good for her. And, um, and people, somebody ran into her in a grocery store and they said, what are those diet gummies you have? And Oprah went and finally did a video about it. And she's like, there are no diet gummies. I don't know what you're all asking me. And one of the comments below the video was like, you meet Oprah and that's what you ask her? And I thought it was freaking hilarious. But that's what happens, right? You're going to meet Oprah in a grocery store and have the nerve to walk up to her and say something. You're not going to ask about diet gummies, I hope, right? So people think they're ready for the moment, but are you? And I only challenge this because I want to get you ready. I want, when you're ready energetically, emotionally, psychically, you're intuiting every moment, then you know how to meet the moment head on and you're able to be yourself in the moment. And when the executive says, Ugh, I don't, you know, I was in front of a meeting once and doing readings and this one executive hated me and I was bombing. I was bombing because I could feel his energy. He hated me. And at the end of the meeting, they all just, now they were hot on my tail wanting to buy a show from me, buying our show. Once I did that, they all just walked the room. They barely said goodbye. You have to get up from that and keep moving. And I did. I did. We kept the producers at that time. They kept pitching me. They knew what I was capable of. The main producer knew because she had readings with me. So you have, you can't let moments like that flatten you out that you never get up again and do something, do the work. So I was so I was thinking recently about all this time and these TV shows. And I was there was one point I was at my office. I had an office in L.A. And I'd gotten the call that um, there were two offers for two networks pretty much on the table. And we had had a lot of interest from a lot of networks, but these networks were really very hot on my tail and they wanted it and they were getting the offer together. And I was like, oh my goodness, I've been working for this for like eight years. It's finally here. I can't even remember how long it was. And I remember leaving there and going, I have nobody to discuss this with because I wasn't surrounded by peers that would understand me having that conversation, except my friend, Allie, who's a script writer. I could like have those conversations with her. And I remember going to the dog park and walking with the dogs and I was so excited. And I was like, this is the moment. My life's going to change. This is incredible. I can't wait. This is the moment I waited for. And, um, and I was just so happy and so excited and didn't really have anybody to share it with. And, and I wasn't one of those people to share those things anyway, because I believe that you hold the energy for yourself because somebody will come in and poo poo it. And you're like, you don't need that shit happening, especially if you're feeling wobbly about it. And I, I don't remember how much went by, but maybe it was like two weeks or so and nada, nothing. And I don't even remember because what happens a lot of times when you're in these production meetings, no matter how much you have a close relationship with the producer, you're not always finding out who's saying no. And I didn't ask. I just was going along my life. And I don't remember the exact moment, but I was in meditation and I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm sitting here living in LA where I don't want to live anymore because I'm waiting for a show to happen. I don't even care anymore because the show they want me to do is not the show I want to do. And I don't need this show to do what I do. 
So I made a decision at that moment to stop putting all my eggs in that basket. And I decided instead to put the eggs in my own basket. And I decided to build the business that I desired to build. And what did I do? I built the business I wanted to do. I moved to where I wanted to live. And I said goodbye. I didn't care any longer. And even being up in Northern California, I had a couple opportunities. They flew me into LA. I don't care. If it's not, I drive the ship. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. But what I realized just recently was how much I was waiting for somebody outside of me to validate who I am and what I do. Oh, you get a TV show, you're validated. No, I validate myself. I validate my own work. I don't need you to validate me. I'd love, you know, it'd be funny for me. I think about this with auditioning because I would go into auditions like, please give me the job. Please give me the job. When I was an actress, I think sometimes like I'd love to see me in an audition today because I'd be like, I don't give a fuck what you think. Here I am. And I'd walk out because I don't need you. I don't need the casting director. So there's a different that different thing that happens. And I was thinking about how I no longer need outside validation. Now, that's not to say I'm running Next Level Living, right? And I have about uh, over 20 people in there. I can't remember how many people. I always lose track of numbers. But I have a bunch of people in there. They're amazing. The initial cohort of 13, 16 people that joined, 13 people already signed up for another year. <clears throat> it's going really, really well in there. Of course, that's important to me. It's important to me that my, my students get results. It's important to me that um, the program's going well. I'm doing a town hall with them on Thursday. So what I do is I'm, I'm starting, I want to meet with them on a quarterly basis to find out what they want to learn as I add to the program. Because their, their paths, their results, their goals, their life is important to me. So, but it's not from a place of, um, if you're rude to me and mean to me, oh my goodness, I'm going to bend over backwards to make sure you're okay. We just got an email recently from someone who said, how dare I charge for things? And I'm like, and my assistant's like, that was really rude. And she wrote this beautiful email back to the person because the person's like, I don't even know how I got on your list. And I'm like, we don't spam anyone. You joined my list. And we're able to tell in my list how you joined my list. So my assistant wrote back this beautiful email and, but stood in the power of who we are. And I was like, you could do that or just say, hey, you joined our list, blah, blah, blah. Thanks a lot for letting us know. See you later and delete her. Like I have no time. If that, if I, I'm not going to sit here and defend myself to you, you want to sit in scarcity, lack, and think that we're all ch trading chickens for wheat? Go right ahead. I'm not doing that argument anymore. But the people in my program, or the people who have studied with me, or the people who are getting to know me, and they want to respectfully have a conversation with me. Let's have that conversation. I'm all for that. I'm not going to deal with someone who's being rude to me. Outside validation. I don't need it. So I want to be clear about this outside validation because what's important to me, like I said, is that I am clearly getting results for my students, for my people in my communities. Now, my communities are very fluid. They're all different people. They're poets, they're scientists, authors, ex-law partners. You know, they're all like most of them a VP of human resources, like the, all over the world, all over different types, not uh, different types of people. They're all together for a common cause. They all know there's this incredible thing inside of them that they want to get out into the world. And I'm helping them to do that. And the way that they're doing that is by developing their gifts. So um, this is not a, just a sales pitch for NLL, although I believe in NLL like nobody's business. We're going to talk about drinking your own Kool-Aid in a second and how important that is and how I've, it's been helping me. But what I want to share with you is when you develop your intuition, you know what to say no to, what to say yes to. When you're developing clairvoyancy, clear seeing. You're able to see the symbols. You're able to envision things. You're able to understand things. When you work on your dreams, I was just in the um, supermarket yesterday. I was in a rush, had a chatty cashier. Normally I don't mind, but this girl was friggin' chatty and it was busy. 
And she's asking, she's like, do you remember your dreams? Cause I just heard her talk about Carl Jung. And she's like, I want to, and I was like, yes, I do dream work. You know, I've done, oh, you do dream work. And I'm like, I don't want to get into a conversation. There's a long line. I can't do this with you right now, girl. And she's like, cause I'm really into this. And I, and, and so now do you do it now? Like, do you analyze all your dreams? Do you, and I, and I didn't realize this in the moment. I was like, no, I don't have to, because my unconscious is my conscious now. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Hear that guys. My unconscious, conscious, <laughs> conscience is my conscious. So when you do dream work, what's happening in dream work is your unconscious, conscious, <laughs> you get the word, is coming to the conscious. And it is telling you what you need to know in order to make better choices, better decisions, so you live a better life. And people are too involved, they're too anxious, too, too fearful, scared, um, be, be becoming a part like they're they're letting the being victimized by life that they're not conscious enough to know what decisions to make. So when they go into the dream state and the bills and the dishes and the laundry is all turned off, the unconscious comes up and you get to work on it in your dream state. And if you're not analyzing and working through your dreams, you're not able to figure it out. I just recently, somebody uh, reached out to me and asked me to help them with their dream. And I did. And the reason why I share that is because people are coming out of the woodwork now because I'm starting to allow people to see me. I'm starting to allow them. So it's really important that your unconscious isn't, <laughs> I'm like, so now like, am I saying the word right? Isn't driving the car. Your consciousness is met, met, your unconsciousness is in your consciousness and you're driving the car together. It's so important. So developing your psychic gifts, clear audience, clearly hearing. I just released uh, the clear cognizance meditation. How many of you get those, those inspirational thoughts and they're like, wow, that was great. That's clear cognizance. Just it's a knowing coming in. You need these tools. If you're a writer, that's what writers are doing. They're getting downloads and they're writing it. That's clear cognizance. So I don't care what side, like what line you're walking who you are these days, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a healer. You all need this work because this work is going to make your life so much richer. And the reason why I can, I can declare that now, I can declare it because the most important thing that happened is I validated myself and I started to see myself and I started to hear myself. And I'll tell you something, this may sound like ego for some of you. It's really not. One thing that released last year was my ego. Now, it's not to say that my ego is gone because that's not true. Anybody, I think there's very few people that can probably walk around egoless. My ego shows up in tennis. Fuck yeah, it's there on the court, man. I can guarantee you my ego is like, huh? Um, and it shows up other times when people push up against it and I notice it. But I do my best not to have, I definitely do my best when I'm teaching, never to have my ego in there because it has no place there. It is, it, you when you move yourself out of the way, this is the other great thing about talking to guides, knowing your higher self. I ask my ego, ego to step aside, my personal self to step aside. So I'm not projecting my stuff onto my students. I'm not going to do that. If a student comes to me, I'm coach, I coach too. I do personal coaching, but I take very few people. And um, the people I'm coaching, they are brilliant. They have brilliant ideas. And if I had, if I, I would never go at ego with that. Somebody presents this incredible idea to me. I'm like, whew, this, I feel into it. My guides feel into it. Like this is this. And then they make it even bigger for them. They show them an even greater thing that they're not seeing, or they help them with the tools and the techniques to get to it. So all of this is like coming together for me. And I'm like, this is fascinating. I'm going to tell you where it started. Well, it started probably years ago, but I suffered with very low self-esteem and insecure. I never realized how insecure I was. And I remember being in college and I'm 57 when I'm recording this, right? So many years ago. And I remember this guy saying to me that these two girls who barely spoke to me, how they wanted to be me because they felt like I was so confident. And I just walked, cause I had a mouth. I always had a mouth on me. Um, and I was like, wow, I'm so, in I thought I'm so insecure. What are they talking about? They don't know me. And I realized as like time went on, like I could see my insecurities and I started to work with them. 
And I remember my brother saying to me, why do you have so such low self-esteem? And what I thought was because of you, you motherfucker, excuse my language. I mean, seriously, I, my family wasn't there like, woohoo, you're amazing. Go ahead, do it. I can't believe you just won an Emmy. Wow. Although they like that. Um, that's incredible. You got a job at MTV just out of college. I didn't get that. Oh my goodness. Look at you. You're acting. Mm -mm. Trying to think of things as a kid, but as a kid, I was never like applauded. So many of us weren't. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I love them for who they are. They, they, they were all human, just trying to figure it out. If I sat here and blamed them, then I'd be a victim. I'm not a victim. But I realized, like, I, I've been really working on, like, where's my self-worth? Where's my self-esteem? Where's my, my confidence? And it's growing like, it's growing like wheat, like flowers. I'm not going to say weeds, flowers. So I am looking at how my confidence is growing and, and how does it, why is it shifted? Now, talking to dead people and telling people what you're seeing and hearing when they think you're nuts, that grows your confidence. You better believe that grows your confidence. Having people tell you that you're, uh, you're crazy and you're saying, okay, that grows your confidence. Trust me, that grows your confidence. You see and hear yourself. Um, trying to think of other things, but these growing these gifts grows your confidence. My, um, when, oh, so I was going to tell you the story. So moving up here to, to where I live now, I, I've shared this story and it's probably in my podcast about um, the yellow and black butterfly and moving to Marin. And my guides had never said yes to this place, but they gave me a big sign to do it, a big symbol to do it. And when I came here, I fell in love with the nature. Every time I crossed over that bridge, um, the Bay Bridge, right? That's the bridge, San Francisco Bridge. I don't go to San Francisco much because the city does not have the energy for me, that particular city. I love Manhattan. Um, but and nothing against San Francisco is just not for me. But every time I crossed over the bridge, I like Marin is gorgeous. And I'd be like, oh, it's beautiful. And then when I bought my house, I was like, mm, not going to be here long. And as I navigated this path, this road, this experience, I never said to my guides, I regret it. I never said when it was so friggin' hard at times. I never said it. I just knew. I never said like, how dare you? None of it. I knew it. I knew, I knew I was on a journey for a reason. Wasn't sure what it was, but I was on a journey. And I just allowed it to show up and I allowed myself to grow and expand and be. And what I learned was I had, I was surrounded. I didn't know anybody here, right? Not a soul. And I knew one person from college and that was it. And that didn't really, that wasn't a friendship that needed to be developed. And, um, I realized like me going someplace where I had no obligations to anyone grew me and grew me in some beautiful ways. And what it did is I stopped needing validation. I stopped needing people to tell me I was okay or I was great or it wasn't about great. It was about just seeing me. Um, it's, it, I was like that with friends a lot. Like I had uh, very, 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 very good friends from 13 years old on. And I depended on them as family. And if anything happened in our relationship, you know how teenagers can be. I was devastated because I didn't like my family. And I noticed like all of that went away because I had me, I had nature. I had my connection with my guides, a connection to my animals, I connection to God, I connection to the stars, to the moons, to the saints. And I started to see me in a way that I've never seen myself before. And I started letting people see me too. And so I was just, I'm just like on this journey now, this magical friggin' journey. It's unbelievable. And I, uh, the other night, Mike has been need, been needing a little help because he has, um, he's starting to have problems with his hips and stuff. And I bought a laser and I've been lasering him at night. We're using the laser on him. And when I use the laser on him, I will read or watch a YouTube video. And I came upon this YouTube video of this couple in their late, probably late fifties, probably same age as me. And they had this beautiful property in Oregon, this beautiful house. And they decided to get to, to just sell it and move to Europe. 
So they packed up their things, they sold this house, and they moved to Portugal. And this guy's a really great storyteller, and I can't remember the name of the YouTube channel, otherwise I'd share it. And he, they went to Portugal, and they record, there's not many videos, I hope they do more. They recorded all like the mishaps and the horrible things that happened, you know, but not from a horrible place, just from a storytelling place of he's in a, is a place of like, okay, what's going on here? Let me understand this. And as he's, as I'm watching this video about them in Port Portugal and they're realizing it's not the right place for them, but he says at the end of it, I, it was, it's been really hard, like crazy hard. And but I don't regret any of it. And it's been such an adventure and we're going to find our home. And you know what? And he said, we left Oregon because we were just sitting on the porch and they show this beautiful picture of them just sitting on the porch in this beautiful place, just drinking tea, a video. And he's like, we're going to find our home in Europe and we're going to buy a house. and we're going to be back on that porch drinking tea, but we're not going to be bored again because we're always going to take adventures. Something like that. He said, and I went, I understand that. I get it because this was such an adventure for me moving to Marin, taking a risk on myself, taking a chance on myself, letting people see me more, doing a podcast, um, selling a book, wanting to write more books, standing in the power of what I teach. It's an adventure. It is such an incredible adventure. And then knowing like, this is not my home. This is not the place where I want to be for a really long period of time. I'm good here. I was just talking to a friend of mine and my cousin. And I was like, I'm good. I'm not, I don't have to leave tomorrow, but I'm in, I'm researching places, getting ready to travel. And I'm okay with it. And I was like, when he said that, I was like, I know you, I get it. It's been an adventure. And I'm so grateful I did it because I found me. At the other side, the other end of that adventure was me. And I was waiting. The me was waiting. And so now we're together, we're joined together, and we're moving forward into new adventures. And I'm so excited by it. So I share all of this with you because I don't want you waiting for an adventure. I want you taking an adventure. I want you being the adventure. I want you to stop sitting on the things that you want to do and waiting till tomorrow. It's like Alex Hormozzi says, if on your list you have, I'll do it tomorrow, it'll never get done. And he's right. Whether you can do the whole kit and caboodle tomorrow, you can't, but you could do a piece of it. This is why I, I did this productivity workshop because and I did a 10X class. I taught a 10X class where I taught them how four buckets, you have four buckets of gold, but one goal is the domino effect to all the other buckets. And it really shocked everyone what their bucket, their main goal was. They thought it was something else, but it wasn't. Their main goal was the thing that they, they did think was important, but it was the one that was moving the needle in all the other buckets. We're going to be selling that class soon. So if anybody's interested in it, you could just email us and it's called the 10X class. It's a really, really good class. It came through me. So I want you to know, like, look, like my second podcast, I'm going to do it. And unless spirit tells me not to do it, it's still something I'm going to do. But I'm at peace that it's not right now. I know that it's not right now. It's not supposed to be right now. I'm very focused on my goals right now. And I'm very focused at making choices and decision every minute towards those goals. And I'm also very focused on going back to the prayer. So one of my biggest prayers has been guide me into stepping into my greatness. Show me how to step into my greatness. And it's not an ego prayer. You may find another way of saying it. For me, what I'm asking is, I see you, God. And I see that you've planted these incredible creative dreams into my heart and soul. And I know that I'm not supposed to leave this earth with these credible creative stories and motivations for people and lessons and teaching and just all of it. It's not supposed to die with me. So I'm asking you to show me with ease and grace how to step into this great greatness, make choices every day and be it. 
And that prayer has opened so many doors for me and has allowed me to step more and more into it. And what that does is go here and study this, go read this book, go do that meditation, go do this exercise. So it's just not always about connecting to that one particular thing. Like, oh, my goal is, um, say my goal was to write a second book right now, which it, it's a goal, but it's not a goal. This, that's not my main goal. And it's not about like sitting down and writing for a hundred pages every single day, even though that's a very important goal as a writer, not a hundred pages, but my goal may be do that challenging yoga class. Make sure you have a really great morning ritual. Make sure you're listening to a podcast about other writers so you get inspired. There's different steps and you've got to be engaging them. You've got to be doing them. So one of the things I've been noticing, I've been um, really noticing the people that I'm serving. And this happened when I moved to this uh, location. And I'm going to share a little bit more about this story. And many of you may know this story, but I'm going to say it for people who are just finding this podcast now. So when I moved to Marin, uh, two weeks after I moved here, one of my um, friends came to visit me. She's actually was one of my first bosses at MTV. Never shared the story with her. And we were sitting out, standing out on my deck and my, I have a beautiful view of trees. It's absolutely stunning. And she looked at the trees, looked at me, looked at the trees, looked at me. I swear she did it like three times. Forgive me for swearing. And she looked at the trees and looked at me and she said, how'd you do this? And I knew exactly what she meant because she was, um, she is an incredible um, person in a really big, big job. And many of us go into a career and we love the career for a while. And then we get tired of the career because our life change, our values change, our morals change, our people have kids and, and the needs of the kids change who you are. You have a life experience and it changes and you're like, oh my goodness, there's something else I'm being called to. I, I know that I can help other people in a whole different way. So I heard all of that, whether it was from her, which part of it was from her soul or all the other souls that I'm meant to help. It all got downloaded in that moment. And I don't remember the answer I said to her, but what I said, what I said was, or what I knew in that moment was I never allowed myself to be miserable in a job. When I became miserable, I shifted it. I changed it. I just would not sit in the misery. It was a promise I made to myself on a very deep level. And you can sit here and go, yeah, but I've got this much money and I have to pay this bills and all of that. And hey, that's your story. Okay. I did too. And I walked away. It wasn't worth it to me. It wasn't worth my misery. It wasn't worth my going into, I was going into NBC every single day. And NBC was so good to me. I have nothing bad to say about that company. Nothing bad to say about MTV. They were both great companies to me. It's such a great job. But going into a job every single day and closing the door and crying your eyes out? No, that's not how we're supposed to live our lives. I don't care. And I was getting a very great paycheck at the age of 30, 31 years old. I was making a lot of money living in Soho, Manhattan. No. What counts more? Now, I was just having another conversation with somebody recently and they were like, I make this much money and I'm not going to just leave it. And I was like, please don't leave it. Make it work for you. I made NBC work for me. Not only did I work for them, but I made it work for me. It was my bridge job. It was the job that was allowing me to go to um, acting classes and go to the gym during the day. And it was such a great, you know, as much as I cried every day, it was such a great setup. I had a great setup and I was making a ton of money. And they appreciated me and I appreciated them. They were so good to me and I was so good to them. So you've got to stop saying, I don't have the time. I have too much going on. And you've got to find a way if that dream is chomping at your heart and soul. It's like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man or whatever, chomping at your heart and soul going, it's just eating it up, man. It's just eating it up. No, no. We got to set that thing free. Yeah, set your heart and soul free. So Soul Finder Academy was born when I did, when that, during that moment, that whole, the course just dropped in. I'm like, oh, I got to teach people who are in a career, who it's, the career is no longer speaking to them. They have the money and the resources to do some studies, 
yet they may not have the time. Those people struggle with time, which is why next level living is not very time consuming. It's let me teach you something, go out and live it. And uh, SFA is the same way. Soul Finder Academy is the same way. And let me help these people do their, their soul's work, what they're here to do. And all that experience, you have all my experience at MTV, all my experience at NBC, all my experience as a, as in other careers, they all feed this moment. I'm able to, like when people think about putting together a workshop or a one-to-many workshop, when I'm putting together a workshop, I'm not just pulling on my psychic gifts and abilities and what I learned. I'm pulling on my dream classes, my acting classes, the time I worked in the laundromat. I'm pulling on everything. That's what makes it my brand. So it makes it my signature course. So recently I just got in touch with somebody else I know for, I met from NBC and I was talking with her and I was like, Oh, we got it. We got to talk. Cause I miss her. She was, I just love her. She's a great person. And I was like, what are you doing? And she, I'm not going to reveal too much. I don't know if she listens to this podcast, but I'm always very careful. And she was like, well, I moved and I'm um, living blah, blah, blah. And I'm still not sure what to do, what I want to do. I'm still not getting off my butt to do it. And I was like, Oh, I can help you with that. I can help you. And I hear that a lot. And I, and I, and I, I, I sympathize with it. Don't want to say I don't, because I understand it. She's not saying, um, I can't do it. I can't do it because of this, that, and this. She's saying it's, I'm lacking the confidence. I'm not trusting. This is what I'm hearing underneath. I'm not trusting I can succeed at this. I don't even know where to start. How can I do this now? And that's a normal reaction, but it's not a reaction to stay stuck. It's not okay. And I want to help all of you, all of those people who are in that place, who know you've got this dream in your heart that is just aching to get out. It's aching. And you know that you are great. And maybe you need a little help with that. Look, my students, my, I hate calling them students because it's, it's not a, it's such a beautiful community of peers. And I consider that, consider them that way. Yes, I'm teaching them. I'm organizing the material, but they bring so much to the table that makes it a beautiful energetic container. It's just amazing. Um, but I'm helping them to see themselves. I'm helping them to believe in themselves. I'm helping them to step into the power of their greatness. And it's so important to do that. So what I've noticed about myself lately, and I'm going to start wrapping this up, is um, I'm just letting all of this pour into me. And I'm finding I'm not backing down. And I'm finding that I'm sharing more of who I am. And, you know, I share it in a way that um, I hope I do. Look, I'm very strong in my opinions of what I feel, but I also respect other people's opinions. So the woman who, you know, wrote us that email, that's her opinion. That's okay. But you're not for me. So you shouldn't be on my list. You really shouldn't because I, I, I don't have the same agreement as you. You're really obviously triggered by what I have to say. So don't be on my list. It's okay with me. Go someplace where you're going to feel seen and heard in your beliefs. You're not going to be seen and heard from me in those beliefs and limit to me, they're limiting. So I'm not going anywhere near that to you. It's not limiting and that's okay. I'm not here to, to um, convince every single person. I'm here to work with people where we have a common ground and we're ready to motivate millions to believe in themselves, love themselves, see themselves, hear themselves, whether it's by motivating through story, motivating them through speaking, motivating them through just holding space for them. Do you know how much I don't talk to people after um, pretty much five, six o'clock at night during the week because I'm holding so much space for people. I don't have the energy to just chat and I don't want to. So after I'm done with work, I'm walking with my dogs in nature. I'm listening to a podcast or an audio book while cooking dinner. And then I'm resting for about 45 minutes, you know, because I go to bed early, I get into bed and I pray and I watch really good motivating things or I read a book. Sometimes I'm reading mystery novels now just to have fun. It's all fun though, I have to tell you. Okay, so here's my last story. I want to tell you it's so important to know yourself so actually i'm going to tell you two stories so I was, a woman reached out to me i don't know how she found out about me 
And she was telling me that this dream she had of what she wanted to do. And I was like, that's great. That's amazing. So where are you stuck? And she said, um, she doesn't know where to start or something like that. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand that. Can you explain that to me? The way she worded it, I didn't understand if she was talking about the marketing and the sales or if she was talking about something else. And the way she answered it, <clears throat> it was both. <clears throat> it was marketing sales and believing in her dream. And I said to her, look, you need to learn marketing and sales. I'm bringing that into next level living. I'm starting to bring that stuff into it. You need to learn that stuff, but you need to believe in yourself more than anything because you can't sell something if you yourself don't believe in it or you have a hard time believing in yourself. Now, so many of you may be like, but I do believe in my dream. Then why aren't you selling it? Why aren't you sharing it with people? And in, in this guy that I'm in a peer to peer mastermind, I put up a thing about selling and he said, it's not selling when you believe in it and you know that it works. And I'm like, he's totally right. I believe in next level of living so much. I'm not here to sell you. I'm here to tell you about it, invite you into it. If you feel it's right, great, come on the ride. If it's not, great, that's good for you to know. But you have to believe in what you're doing. You have to in order to stand in the truth of it and to um, when you brush up against people who don't believe in you, be like, okay, somebody, somebody else was just asking me uh, how I deal with limitation. I, that's a whole podcast. I need to do that. If you're in a relationship where the other person is limited in their belief system and they don't see it and they're scared and the person was like, how do I do it? And I'm like, you work on yourself. You work because that person is just mirroring what you're limit, what you're fearing in yourself. You think you have to convince that person in order for them to see your way, convince yourself that person will come along for the ride or you won't even hear what they have to say. Even if you're in a relationship, you just won't. When I told people I was going to be an actress, I was so convi convinced of it. I don't even know if anybody said you couldn't do it because I didn't hear it. I, I really don't know. And then what happened? Four months later, I became an actress. You need to convince it and then the people around you will shift. Here's the thing, because they're, they're usually there by the universe to help you grow that muscle. So the last story. Confidence is super important, building your confidence. And I've noticed how I'm standing in my confidence. It's not ego. It's not an ego confidence, like, look at me. I was actually talking to someone recently. I've been talking to a lot of people. And um, they were saying that people were saying no to them. And they were like, well, you just wait and see until I make da-da-da-da-da. And you're going to be begging to be doing this. And I was like, I understand that. I used to feel that way about things. But the truth is we all say no to things because it's it's not the right thing at the moment. Who cares? Someone says no to you, they say no to you. Who cares? Move on, next. So I had actually recently, um, about a month ago, I wrote a message to somebody who's a mentor to me, who I feel is a mentor. I've learned from this person. I have a lot of respect for them. And uh, I wrote them a, a pitch thing to come into. We bring bonus people into Next Level Living to teach. We just had a, a writer on teaching um, about how to write into your genius. It was really great. We had a mala bead person. You know, we have, so I bring different bonuses in to expand. When you learn different things, you grow and expand and you build your confidence. You want to talk about that writing retreat uh, workshop. They were writing into their genius and then they had, they didn't know this. I didn't know this even. He made everybody read it, the whole thing. And I got a couple of emails after like, oh my goodness, I was so scared. And I'm like, you need to do more of that because that's really good for you. I did so many improv classes, acting classes, writing classes. I had teachers tell me I sucked in front of people. And I've been like, all right, who cares? Move on. You know, grammar, is, grammar and punctuation is not my strong suit. And sometimes spelling isn't either. I'm working on it. I'm learning. But it doesn't mean I'm not a great storyteller. So I wrote this mentor and I pitched this idea to him, you know, and I said, um, I, I didn't want to go through his email system because I wanted to go directly to him. And he read it and never responded. And I didn't care. I was like, well, it's busy. Who gives a shit? I moved on. I created something else. I didn't worry about it. And that was really growth for me, huge growth, because I didn't take it in the past. I may have taken it like, oh, how dare you? Like, fuck you, buddy. You know, you just wait and see. And I, I didn't do that. And I understand the wait and see part. I remember, um, I don't know if Bette Midler still has this, but I remember years and years and years ago, and I'm pretty sure it was Bette Midler. She had a company, a production company, and she said their motto was, we hold a grudge. 
And I laughed and I was like, I understand that one because believe me, there's some people I do. I'll be like, uh, uh, but, um, so this mentor just didn't respond. I knew he read it because you could see who reads it on messenger. And then the other day he wrote something on another, uh, social media platform that I contributed to. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to say something here. And I contributed something. And he wrote back and he said, what do you mean by that? And then I wrote my reason. There you go. Who cares? I'm not holding a grudge. He's not holding a grudge. He's not like, oh, I didn't. He probably doesn't even remember he got the message. doesn't matter. I still respect him. I still respect what he does. I still respect his work. It's got no, first of all, you know what happened to me? Like when that happened, I went, hmm, he didn't respond. Well, that has nothing to do with me. That has to do with him. Him not responding is his responsibility, not me. I didn't do anything wrong. Big, big. So ask yourself, you know, do you think you're doing something wrong? If somebody says no, I say no to people. Who cares? Move on. See your vision, be your vision, and take steps towards your vision. And don't let anybody say no to it. Now, that's not to say that feedback sometimes, constructive, good, healthy, respectful feedback isn't something you need sometimes to learn. But I, I, I was just, I shared this with you guys, actually. I know I shared this. I had that dream where I was on stage. I don't remember the whole dream. And I forgot my lines or, or, or I was bombing on stage. And the audience was full, like half full. And then when I looked up after I bombed, it was like a quarter full, like everybody, most people left. And I still had two other monologues to do. And I thought in my head, oh my goodness, when this is over, I'm going to be like a puddle of tears of shame and an embarrassment. I'm going to be hiding in the corner. And I could see myself in the dream, in the corner, hiding. And I, then the next thought was, <clears throat> yeah, but you'll get up and do it again. You'll still get up and do monologues. Yeah, you'll sit and you'll cry in the corner. But then you'll get up and do it again and you won't even care and you'll move on. Get up, do it again, move on. Make it happen. So I was going to do a reading for all of you. I had to clear my throat. I'm going to do a reading for everybody for 122 because that was the number that came up before. 122. So what I want you to do is ask yourself about your own greatness. Where do you need to stand in your own greatness or find your own words? But basically you all have like... Um, a novel inside of you or a story inside of you, a speech inside of you, a TV show inside of you. Um, maybe it's a charity. Maybe it's an app. <clears throat> maybe it's teaching people fitness or something, but there's something inside of you that's just ready to come out. And I want you to have your own intention and prayer about what your question is around it. Okay. So ones are about new beginnings. But it's also spirit is saying is about standing on your own two feet, be not being afraid of being alone. Sometimes this journey can feel extremely lonely because no one sees and hears you. But as long as you see yourself and all you have to do is get in front of a mirror, see yourself, acknowledge yourself, value yourself, then you're fine. You can continue to walk. And as you walk along the path, consider yourself seeing yourself as number one, the one just walking along. You run into number two. And number two is about partnership with your soul first and foremost. Are the things that you're doing in life and the choices you're making and the decisions you're making, are these partnered with your soul? Are you aligned with your soul? Is everything helping you to feel really grounded in your soul. So two comes along for the journey and now it's one and two and they're walking along and now there are three and that's mind, body, and soul. So you're experiencing wholeness because the decisions you're making in life are moving you forward on your path, on your journey towards your goals. But you're also noticing the moments, each and every moment, and every choice you're making and your unconsciousness is in your consciousness. And you're not veering off because you know what you're doing. You know the decisions you're making. You know every moment you're living. 
and you feel empowered and you feel good and you're understanding more and more where you're going, what you're doing and how you're meant to be. And then you run into another two. And that too is about partnerships with other people and partnerships in business and partnerships in love and partnerships in relationships. But you're opened your eyes to see them and you're actually tapping people on the shoulder that you want to be in partnership with. You're not waiting till they see you, you see them. And you're tapping them and you're saying, hey, how you doing? I'd like to talk to you, get to know you. What is it that you do? Let's talk. Maybe we can do something together. And that too comes along for the journey. And now you have a five. And the five is transformation and there's a door in front of you. And on that door, this doorknob. And all of you are together now. You're in partnership. You have people supporting you. You're in a peer-to-peer and you're feeling really powerful standing in the number one in your partnership with your soul and your partnership with others and you're ready for change. And you feel ready for this opportunity. You feel ready for this change. And you open your door and you step into your life. Where are you? I'm gonna leave you with one more thing. When in the moment of doubt, which you will have when you start accelerating on your journey, when in the moment of fear or something scares you, Surrender, surrender to it. The other night, it was about a week ago, I was in one of those moments. I was in the kitchen and the fear wanted to take over. I went, no, I'm making great choices. I'm making incredible decisions. I have, I am productive. And I put my hand up in the air and I said, I surrender to you. I give it to you. And I felt my guides reaching down, holding my hand, saying, we got you. We're doing this with you. Thanks for trusting us. And I said, I trust them. I trust you. And all that fear, all that anxiety went away. And what dropped into its place was an incredible amount of solution, opportunity, momentum, education, who to study with, excitement, inspiration, innovation, energy, vitality, abundance was all there. I offer that up to you. Sending you a ton of love. Thank you so much. And as always, I forget to say this in the beginning, please rate, review, and subscribe. It would really mean the world to me. I really would love to push this podcast out to more people. And especially if you do it on Apple, it's great. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.